Hello everyone, my name is Katya. And my name is Bjorn. And together with our Irish Wolfhound Balthasar, we live and travel in our Mercedes 580Z from 1984. We get a lot of questions about the bus, this model, about the conversion and how much it costs. So this video is going to be about pros and cons of having such an old vehicle. We're going to explain why we chose exactly this model. And we're also going to answer a couple of questions about the bus that we received on Instagram. So let's begin. And starting with pros, number one is a very simple one. We like how this model looks like. Yeah, we ended up uh, looking at a whole bunch of different models, makes in different years, but uh, we kind of like this one. We got stuck for the 508 uh, from 1984. We had a more modern car before, a Renault Master, but it was my company car. And here on Gotland, at least, you see a lot of businesses using those a little bit more modern cars. So we uh, associate them with businesses and carpentry cars and stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, it's not for us. So we wanted to have the old one. We thought that uh, this model looked a little bit more cozy. It's a little bit more round. And uh, we like the retro look as well. Number two. Number two is the size of this model. Yeah, it's a good size for us. Uh, one of the main benefits is that it's just shorter than six meters, which allows us to travel a little bit more cheaper on ferries, bridges, toll roads around Europe, because often they have an extra fee if you're longer than six meters. So that's a great thing with this model. And uh, it's big enough to have everything we need inside, as well as it's... Uh small enough to be comfortable to drive and park on small mountain roads because we travel a lot in Norway. Yeah. We like uh, that country, it's beautiful. And, and we uh, usually take the back roads and go out roads, in the forest. And, uh, <laughs> they have very, very narrow roads there in the northern Norway at least. So I don't know, I can't imagine driving with a bigger vehicle than that, <laughs> even though it's possible. Yeah. Number three, ground clearance. We have a uh, great ground clearance on this model. I don't know if it was the owners before us or the, before, the ones before them, but somebody, I think, raised this model a little bit. So we have a lot of clearance, which uh, makes us be able to take smaller roads and maybe some back roads and stuff that aren't as good as if you go to campings and stuff, which is really nice for us because we like going a little bit off the beaten track. <laughs> yeah, plus uh, you can use that space for water tanks or even storage. We've seen a couple of people who uh, rebuild the bottom of the bus, of their buses, and uh, made boxes that you can open from outside. So you get the uh, storage boxes uh, underneath your floor, actually, on the outside, which is really practical. If, you're, if you don't need a ground clearance, it's really good to have some extra space. Yes. Number four, dimensions inside. Yes, we have uh, quite a lot of living space inside, at least we think so. Uh, we lowered the floor a little bit, so we got 1.9 meters in height, so I could stand up straight. It would be very annoying otherwise, we thought if we're going to live in it long term, mm -hmm. then you want to stretch out, so it's important for us. And uh, width-wise, we're one, almost 1 1.9, so uh, that's the same direction we sleep on. So we save some space with the bed in the back. And that's just enough for me to lay down and sleep straight also, which is really nice. And from the front seats uh, to the rear window, like in the back, we have uh, about 4.2 meters. So it's quite a lot of living area. At least it, it, it works for us and, and our big dog, mm -hmm. which is great. Which is great. Great. <laughs> okay, number five, big front window. Yes, we were looking at these models. We looked at a few here on the island, actually. And the first thing that struck us when we were inside was the huge front window. It feels really airy in the front and it's really nice to drive because you see everything, which is practical and safe. Yeah, and we're also thinking of actually building a little sitting area here with a little table in between uh, because it's um, we really like to hang here. Yeah, if it's like bad weather and stuff, you can blow, always yeah. hang out inside. 
it's great. Number six, it was cheap to buy. We got it for 40,000 Swedish crowns and um, it's approximately 3,800 euro. Yeah, which is uh, really good for an old car. Usually if you buy a newer model or newer cars, they're way more expensive. And that allowed us in our budget to have uh, more flexibility with the uh, conversion. So we thought it's uh, pro. Because if you buy a newer one, it's not always certain that it's in a really good shape. Usually they say like that, but sometimes if you buy something in between 90, 2000, somewhere there, you may experience some electrical issues or maybe even water damage. It costs uh, more to buy a car like that and then you end up spending even more money to convert it. Yeah, n not always, but it, yeah, it might happen. It, it can, can happen. The, the pro about buying the old one and redoing it like we did is that you get uh, total control. Like you renew the whole system, you go through the whole roof, everything. So you know that it's good when you're done. And you get the layout you want. Yeah, exactly. You can just customize it as you please. Yes, number seven is an interesting one. It's actually taxes and insurance. Yeah, which is really great, at least in Sweden. If you have a vehicle that's more than 30 years old, they take away the tax. The government thinks that you've paid enough tax after 30 years <laughs> on your vehicles. The government never thinks that you paid enough no, 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 taxes. No, 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 that's true, that's true. But uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, they, they take the tax away after 30 years, which... Um, is very good for this model too because it's way cheaper to own compared to paying all the taxes all the time. Mm -hmm. It's also really good in the insurance part because it's a bit older so you don't pay as much and you can even get some enthusiast old-timer insurance which uh, allows you to insure your vehicle way cheaper than if it would have been a vehicle that you use for driving to work every day, etc. Stuff like that. So that's also a big pro that we don't pay as much to own this car compared to a more modern car. They're usually yeah. way more expensive per month or per year. The whole idea of getting an older vehicle was to lower the cost, the monthly cost we have. Um, yeah, so we could travel longer time or save more money. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Number eight, the engine. Yeah, in this particular model, we have the OM314 engine. It's a four cylinder diesel engine, and it's said to be the Mercedes one million mile engine, which is really great. And hopefully it's very, very reliable. Um, as long as you take care of it, of course. Um, it's not the strongest engine, but I mean... It was one of the reasons we wanted to have exactly this model. Yeah. Because yeah. it's supposed to be unbreakable. We... You can pour sand in it and it's supposed to be running. Although you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, easy mechanics. Yeah, since it's an older vehicle, you can, if you're a little bit handy, you could probably do anything that happens on the road if it's nothing super major you can fix it yourself there and then which we like because uh, we don't like to get stuck or stuff we it happens but we, we don't like to be it. independent wanted to be able to fix most of it ourselves and um, there is not that much that can break actually because there is no electricity here no yeah. It's more or less the lights. There are no special circuit boards or anything like that. Uh, weird sensors and stuff that you have in the new cars. This one is just an engine and a couple of lights. So it's very easy to fix yourself. That's uh, one of the big pros with this one, we thought. Yeah. Number 10, it's an old timer, which allows us to fly under the radar in most green zones in Europe. Yeah, and since they're doing more and more green zones, all the main cities and everything are becoming green zones. It's also a pro, because if you have an old timer like this, sometimes it's enough to join a car club or an enthusiast club of some sort. Uh, in certain countries, it's even enough you buy a special sticker and put on your car if you're gonna go through a green zone. And that should be enough that you can travel through the green zone with your old vehicle, which is 
very good in a sense because if you have a little bit modern car they won't even allow you in there and there's no stickers for those ones so you have to have an old timer to do that usually but it's good and uh, a little bonus number 11 which was an unplanned one but since we're talking about mechanics it's the customer service yeah, uh, Mercedes, uh, at least the uh, dealership we have here on our island, they're really, really great service at their place. They helped us out a lot. We've been there a lot buying parts and they can actually special order your parts. They can also check the status on every warehouse for Mercedes in the entire world. So actually two parts on this car was the last ones that we could get a hold of. One was all the way from America. They found it in one storage for Mercedes there. And then it took us maybe three days and we They're had it here. They're very fast and very helpful. And if they see that something is easy to fix yourself, they actually give you a blueprint for the part, uh, how it's built so you can put it apart yourself. Yeah, and uh, they just recommend you that you might as well do it yourself. It will cost you way less. They're uh, really great and down to earth people. So yeah. if you have an issue or if you're looking for parts, check with your dealership first. Yeah, it's a great service. And now to the most interesting part: the minuses. <laughs> so number one, having such an old vehicle means a lot of work. We spent around six months, both of us. Mm. Uh, renovating the whole bus, both exterior, mechanics, Bjorn was fixing, and uh, the interior. Yeah, we went through everything. So whilst it cost you less to purchase a bus like that, we gotta be ready to spend a lot of time renovating it. A lot of time, sweat, blood and tears. <laughs> With uh, sometimes money. Yeah, but it's worth it, at least we, th we think so. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting project and uh, you actually would be proud of it. You get to save a car that maybe could have been retired and sent to junkyard. Just, yeah. um, and now it's more or less in a mint condition and it will serve your whole lifetime. Yeah. Okay, number two. This bus is uh, very, very heavy. So you need a C driving license to drive it, at least here in Europe. Yeah, in Sweden at least it's maximum 3.5 tons for a regular driver license, except if you took it before 1996, then you're allowed to drive up to 5 tons. Why? I really don't know, but that's how it is. But since we couldn't do that, I had to take the C driver license, because after we made all the add-ons and rebuilt the whole bus, we also added some big tanks with water and we have a really big fuel tank. Then we were at 4.5 tons fully loaded, so we have to have a C driving license for this one. But the chassis is very heavy as well, so it's probably more or less unavoidable with this model. And uh, even though a C driving license uh, costs you extra money and takes time to get, we do not see it as a negative thing, actually, because when we were traveling in northern Sweden last summer, uh, Bjorn got a lot of many job offers as a truck driver. Yeah, because they are needed everywhere, so that's so a good thing to have also. It's it's an extra skill that actually may help you to get some work along the road, who knows? That's never wrong. Yeah, it's not a very bad thing. No. Number three, the engine being a pro, it's also a con. It's a very, very very weak <laughs> yeah at least for the weight we have since we're at 4.5 tons uh, we have all 84 horsepowers mm. in the engine which uh, doesn't really help us uphill very much it's uh, hard if it's steep uphills we go very slow and i think we top out at around 90 kilometers an hour that's why we that's what we usually cruise at if we're on a highway or something but only if it's a very flat highway, otherwise yeah. it's way slower. So being a pro, it's also a con. So we are considering of uh, considering changing the engine and uh, or maybe installing turbo, but we haven't decided yet since the engine was one of the reasons why we wanted to buy exactly this model. Yeah. It's a hard decision. 
so we don't really know. So if you have one of those and maybe you've done it before, like let us know, maybe give us a tip what to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that would be great. <laughs> very, very hard driving uphill and uh, we're afraid too many people get annoyed at us yeah. when they follow us, yeah. Number four, this engine sounds a lot. Since we're basically sitting on the engine, you hear it a lot. It's very loud in here when you drive. We did some soundproofing when we were restoring the chassis in all the nooks and crannies we were going through that we knew we wouldn't get to later. We did the soundproofing there now, but uh, we still have a little bit to do. So if you have any tips or tricks about how to get the sound of the engines on these models down, please tell us <laughs> uh, because we're still working on it. But uh, it's way better now. At least you can talk when you're driving. <laughs> yeah, before you couldn't hear each other. We actually saw a video on YouTube. There is a couple who drive with uh, protection headphones. Yeah. <laughs> on these devices. Um, it was almost like that. But we uh, insulated quite a lot. But uh, we're not done yet. No. Number five. Some parts can be hard to get or a little bit expensive sometimes. We had a little bit of uh, bad luck choosing this model. It's from 1984, and apparently, according to Mercedes, there was a big fire in the main factory in Germany who produced all the parts for this year and a couple of other years. So we have had some troubles finding all the parts, but luckily Mercedes has a guarantee, a parts guarantee, which allows you to order any part still to this vehicle from the original factory they will produce it to it's a new production for you. exactly it usually costs a little bit more yeah of course but, but it's uh, possible in, yeah on the bright side nothing is impossible and there is no part you cannot get exactly which makes uh, us feel quite safe so even though there is something that we cannot buy from the dealership we still can order it yeah so that was pros and cons of having such an old bus and exactly this particular model now you know why we chose it we really like it and uh, we wouldn't change it for anything else. No, it fits us really well and we're super happy with it. Yeah, we well, maybe we'd like to change our engine <laughs> in maybe. the future. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, we'll see. that's the only thing. We would like to be able to drive a little bit faster uphill. That's one of the biggest minuses so far. Mm. Yeah. Everything else is uh, easy to fix. Mm. And uh, now to the questions. We received a couple of questions on Instagram, and this is going to be fun. So, question number one. My husband is six foot seven. Will he be comfortable there? That's about two meters tall, I think. Um, yeah, it might be a little bit of a issue in our specific rig, because we only have 1.9 to the roof. But um, It's 10 centimeters. So yeah. But it's not impossible to be in, inside here. Uh, we've seen a couple of vents where people uh, raised uh, their roof. But it's something you can do in basically any van. Mm -hmm. Maybe not in a very short van. That will look weird. Like but, a pop mobile. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's not impossible. The best thing would be maybe to rent one of those and try. I would say if you're going to live in it long term, it probably won't work out for him because it's very annoying not to be able mm. to stretch out or stand properly sometimes. And some people travel with Volkswagen. It, yeah, it's uh, this, you know. definitely doable. It, it is it is pretty big, but uh, it's always better to try it first. So, you know, yes. for sure. Uh, question number two. How much money has gone into the conversion? And uh, we can take also another one. How much was the total cost to build the bus? We have quite many questions about the cost. So uh, we got the bus for 40,000 Swedish crowns. And um, the conversion cost us around uh, 18, 90,000. At least. At least. We know of. We agreed on not calculating that <laughs> because we didn't want to know. But uh, we know approximately the total budget was around 150 thousand Swedish crowns we think and you could get it for less you could get it for more 
It really depends on what you want and the layout you're going to, going to build. Exactly. It totally depends on all the systems you want. If you want it simple or if, if you want it even more advanced. Uh, we, we had a couple of friends who actually found the similar bus for just uh, $1,500 uh, uh, euro. So um, you could get uh, one of these cheaper as well. Probably depends on the seller, your luck and the yeah. condition. Yes. But uh, yeah. These are the numbers. Uh, what kind of mileage do you get? We're looking at the Vario as well. Whoa, um, I think the mileage so far has been uh, average of 1.3 liters per 10 kilometers. And that is with very mixed driving because it was uh, a lot of Sweden we drove through and it's very flat. And then we went to Northern Norway and that's a lot of hills everywhere. So, I would say probably around maybe 1.3 per 10 kilometers. And uh, we're pretty happy with that because we thought uh, it would be more considering yeah, how heavy we are. Exactly, especially since we're so heavy, we calculated with way more than that. So, mm -hmm. for, for us, at least, we think it's pretty good cons considering the weight of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. This one? It's in German. Uh, he says, I have troubles getting up the mountain with my 601. And how is the mountains for you? Well, we have the same problem. <laughs> 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 um, the engine ain't that strong. So as soon as it gets, a, we get a very steep uphill, it goes very slow. We probably sadly annoy some people that are behind us because they can't wait 10 minutes getting up the hill but um, yeah we have the same issue it's a little bit slow when you go uphill yeah actually uh, maybe a little tip or i don't know maybe it's not that fun to do that but uh, uh, when we were staying in Lofoten, in Lofoten and we spent quite a few months there in the end we um, decided to drive in during the evenings yeah, uh, when it's less, less traffic. traffic yeah. And yeah, maybe you don't see as much, but if you've been there for a while, you don't really need to. If you just have to get from point one to if, B, A to B. Yeah, then, if, uh, if you know there's a lot of hills and stuff on that route that you're taking right then, maybe it's better just to wait until the evening or yeah. do it early in the morning. And maybe. it was uh, so nice. No, no cars, nobody's getting annoyed and yeah. you just drove in the evenings. That's how we solved it. <laughs> Um, how much liters now on the same mm. one? Uh, what would you say are the bare basics when it comes to buying the right vehicle as well as layout? Um, it's probably figuring out your plan. And yeah. The, what's the purpose of this vehicle? Are you going to travel long term or short term? Are you going to colder or warmer countries? Yeah, are you going to be on the roads? Are you going to be on the back roads and off roads? It's yeah. a lot to plan out and you have to know what you want to do with the vehicle you're going to convert in that case. Yeah, if you're going to travel for a long time, I'd personally go for a little bit bigger vehicle to be able to have a, an indoor kitchen in case the uh, weather is bad. Yeah. Maybe to have um, more storage space for winter clothes and stuff like that. Yeah. Also, if you're going to a colder country, maybe you want to have all your tanks indoors so that the water doesn't freeze. That might be a good idea, yeah. Then you also need space. A, uh, mm. some space. And if you're going to travel for just a short amount of time and uh, maybe you're going off-road, then you could go for a more agile off-road vehicle. Yeah, maybe a little bit less space, but it uh, can handle more off-road yeah, maybe. it will be more fun to travel. You yeah. can go basically anywhere you want. So I would say it's it's a kind of a big question, but I think you got to try to plan out what the general idea of your travels are and what you want from your vehicle and after that you know more or less how you're gonna yeah and you build layout after that yeah and uh, another tip is just to take anything you have right now any car just put in the bed and go yes because you figure out a lot along the way <clears throat> don't uh, wait too long don't be a perfectionist no. because you will never get out of your garage <laughs> no <laughs> you'll be stuck there yeah forever. that's how we started we used to have a lincoln navigator we just put in a bed a couple of storage boxes underneath and we went yeah 
and that's how we knew we wanted to have an uh, indoor kitchen for example because it was very windy that summer it was yeah. raining a lot so it was not fun to cook food when the fire was going off all the time no um yeah so it's just to go and um we cannot say that much about layout because we don't really have the layout we really like or enjoy we have a layout that uh, works for the three of us since we have a very very big dog yeah we would have chosen some other uh, solutions to some stuff yeah. but uh, it takes more space and we wanted baltasar to have as much space as possible so we'll see how we solve yeah. that in the future but for now it's a little bit like that and it's also the layout for you might not be the right one for us or vice versa it's very individual so you gotta really research and figure out what you want from your vehicle and that is more or less what will decide your layout i guess mm -hmm. baltasar is so big yes baltasar is very very big he waits for those who don't know baltasar is an irish wolfhound he is uh, it's considered to be the biggest breed in the world um, there are probably bigger ones but the official ones yeah and he weights around 85 kilos and if he stands on his back paws he is taller than bjorn yeah way taller than me so he is uh, very very long if he stretches out he starts here in the cabin and ends more or less there back <laughs> by the, <laughs> by the sofa almost. <laughs> yeah so yeah he is very big I've been looking at a 410 Allrad, but worried it will be too difficult to get parts and maintain. I've googled this one actually, and it's a Mercedes. The best tip would be go to your dealership. Definitely. They've been, they've been amazing. They, they've been very helpful, and they have status of any part you need. You will know exactly what you need. They will, they will know the amount of the parts left, and they can produce the parts you need as well. Yes, so that's a... Uh big recommendation yeah. if you uh, try it otherwise you could research on the internet we did a lot of research even though we ended up getting a different year than uh, originally thought and ended up having some issues with getting some parts um, we still did a lot of research and it's very important that you look at your model look at the year so you don't end up buying the one we did and then you get a problem with the parts later <laughs> so a couple of questions about the parts mm -hmm. how many did you look at before you found that one not that many actually we were very lucky to found find uh, this bus on our island so yeah. we didn't even have to leave um, the island and go to the mainland to pick up which is usually the case on the island we live on yeah so we maybe looked at um, six seven before oh, this one and um, two of them were here on the island and they were very very rusty yeah um, one of them was originally white but when we got there it appeared to be very brown <laughs> <laughs> but um, these were the buses that uh, helped us to understand that we wanted this model because we really liked them even though they were not in a very good condition yeah yeah we also um, looked at a few online we have a site in Sweden you can look at different used cars and then you can specify which model and everything but uh, the problem with Sweden is very long country and the nice ones we found that had a little rust and were pretty nice they were all the way up in Sweden which is very far for us because we live in not really the south but a little bit south of the middle of Sweden mm -hmm. so yeah about yeah, at least six, seven ones we looked at before we ended up buying this one. Yeah, um, and the question from Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Is it big enough for you too? I'm looking at a used 35 foot motorhome with a cat diesel. I googled those ones; they're huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if if it was the correct one, so yeah, it it will be enough space for you definitely. definitely. It's enough space for the two of us. We think. With Baltasar. Yeah, with Baltasar so. here. So uh, we can send Baltasar over to you to Canada. So yeah, you can and then have you can try it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, it's enough. We In the beginning, when we had to move in uh, very suddenly, we yeah. lived uh, in a little cabin after we sold our house. And uh, we found out that we have to move out um, a bit earlier Pretty than fast. we thought. 
So that evening we were sitting here with all the boxes and clothes and everything was just in chaos. It felt a little bit crowded. <laughs> and yeah, and I was sitting and thinking that what uh, what are we doing? Is it a mistake? But uh, once you start traveling, and um, realize just, just you just realize that you don't need as much as you think you do. Exactly. And now after we've been traveling for uh, over half a year, six, seven, eight months. We know for a fact that we don't need even half of what we have in the bus. We could oh. get rid of uh, most of it. And uh, maybe it's a matter of a habit as well. Yes. Yes, you get used to it after a while. We actually, now during this corona situation, we're staying at the same cabin again. And uh, it's around 40 square meters. And it feels more annoying to be in that cabin than in the bus somehow. Because we got used to the bus. <laughs> yeah. So... I think you're gonna be fine. Yeah, if definitely. You're gonna get that one. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think it's the last question here. What was the thing that made you sell your belongings for a van life? A realization, someone, a dream. Whoa. <laughs> so this is a very big question, and we're considering or maybe making a separate video about it. But uh, in short, we wanted to have more time and energy to do to work with what we like yeah and focus on the projects and ideas that we have yeah because um, the, the whole idea was not to avoid work it was to actually get more free time and uh, lower the costs so mm. we could invest more in our own projects and um, you need the three main ingredients you need time you need money and you need energy yeah. and without one, one or it, the other yeah it doesn't work and uh, that was the reason why we were thinking of maybe leaving the bus travel which we also wanted to do mm. maybe work less or more with our own projects and also save some money along the way yes the less expense you have the easier it will be living we figured um yeah it's it's nice not to have to stress to work to just pay the bills every month uh you never have any spare time and when you have you're always tired so for yeah. us it was very important to get our own time it's also nice to wake up in the morning and know that oh today i'm gonna do what i actually wanted to do yeah yeah and um it's not always like that of course not but uh, we are kind of working towards that. Yes. Yeah. That's the but, goal. <laughs> yeah. But we, we could uh, probably, we'll probably do a little bit more in-depth video why and how and how we came to this realization and how we went about doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's for another video, I guess. <laughs> so thank you for watching. And thank you for the questions. It was uh, fun answering your questions and uh, if you missed anything or you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And uh, see you in our next video.